Greetings, greetings everyone. My name is Lakita Maka. Today's lesson is all on animal nutrition and digestion. Digestion is a process in which food is taken in and processed to turn it into basic nutrients that can be absorbed into the bloodstream. So this can happen in both animals as well as humans. But for the purposes of our topic, because this is part of the grade 12 agricultural sciences lesson, according to the CAPS document. So for the interest of our subject, we will just be discussing um, animals, both ruminants as well as non-ruminant animals. Before we discuss digestion, I want us to look into the alimentary canal. So we're going to start with the alimentary canal of a ruminant. So an alimentary canal is the passage along which food passes through the body. So it will start from the mouth, then ends um, in the anus. So the canal contains a series of organs of the body which are involved in in the in the digestion so it also absorbs water as well as excretes part of food that cannot be digested so this food that cannot be digested anymore will be ex excreted through the anus so the external structure of the alimentary canal of ruminants as well as non-ruminants is different so I want us to look into the structure in front of us. This is a structure of a ruminant. This is a cow. So cows as well as sheep will have the same, the same structure, of course, and other animals that are ruminant animals. So their alimentary, alimentary canal consists of the mouth, the esophagus, and they consist of the four stomach. So this form first stomach is divided into four into the rumen, reticulum, omasum, as well as abomasum. Then the alimentary canal has got the small intestine as well as the large intestine. Then we have the structure of non-ruminants. As I have mentioned earlier, that these two are different. So the main difference between these two is the stomachs. So the ruminants have got four stomachs and the non-ruminants have no four stomachs, meaning that they've got what we call a true stomach. So if you look into this structure in front of us, this is the, 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 the alimentary canal of a pig. So pig is a non-ruminant. It has got a true stomach and no full stomach. That means it doesn't have a rumen, it doesn't have a reticulum, it doesn't have an omasum, it doesn't have an abomasum. So the alimentary tract will contain the mouth, it will contain esophagus, it will contain stomach, um, small intestine, as well as the large intestine. Then the interesting part now with the small intestine of a pig is that it is divided into three, into the duodenum, the jejunum, as well as the ileum. Then with the, with the large intestine, it is divided into the small colon. There is also a large colon. We'll also have the rectum as well as the anus. Now I want us to look into another non-ruminant, another non-ruminant animal which is a fowl or a chicken. So chickens as well do not have four stomachs, they have got um, true stomachs or just a simple stomach as we can if you want to say that way. So, the alimentary canal of a chicken will start from the mouth as well. Um, it will have esophagus, it will have the crop, 
it will have the stomach. Now this stomach, or what we call in fowl, the gastric complex is divided into two compartments. These compartments are called the proventriculus as well as the gizzard. Then it will have the small intestines as well as the large intestine. Yes, the, 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 the chicken as well will have the rectum as same as the, 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 the pig. And also instead of the anus, it doesn't have an anus, it has what we, ha what we call a cloaca. Right. So coming to the differences in the external structure of both these um, animals, just to summarize what we have been trying to say. With the ruminants, ruminants have got four stomachs. That means they've got a rumen, a reticulum, a mesum, as well as a bamesum, right? But with the non-ruminants, they don't have four stomach, they just have a simple stomach. Right now, with the ruminants, the last stomach, the last part of the fourth stomach, which is the fourth stomach, there, which is called abomasum, it functions as a simple stomach of basically of non ruminants, right? But when it comes to the intestines, now the small intestines with 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 the ruminants the ruminants have got very long small intestine but with the with the non ruminants they have got quite short intestines i think this can be argued because they've got they are small animals of course but there are a lot of um they've got their functions of course So now that we have discussed the external structure of both the ruminant as well as non-ruminant, now I want us to look into the in internal structure of the alimentary canal of a ruminant. Remember I said that the alimentary canal of the ruminant consists of four stomach, which has got four co compartments, which include the rumen, which is the largest part of the stomach, then the reticulum, the omesum, as well as the abomasum. So we, we, we're going to start from the reticulum, the, the rumen, I mean, this, this area here. So the food will move through the esophagus, then to the rumen, then what happens here? Yeah, inside the rumen, there are small uh, tongue-like protrusions, which are also called papillae, that can be seen with the naked eye. Now, these are used to absorb the breakdown products of microbial digestion, which are mainly volatile fatty acids. So, they develop when the young ruminant begins to feed on forage or grain. Then, this food is then um moved from the rumen to the reticulum so this area here which is called the reticulum is the second part of this four stomach this is the second compartment which received from food from the rumen then it passes it through to the omesum the third part here so what happens in the in the reticulum with the reticulum there are it, it looks like a honeycomb uh, structure. So this structure helps to form fibrous food such as grass into lumps or boluses. And these boluses are retained by the esophagus to the mouth through the process that we call rumination. So this is basically chewing the cud. So what happens when this food moves back to the mouth through the esophagus, it regurgitates right it is chewed now again or rechewed again into finer particles then this food again will move from the reticulum to the omesum right 
Then with the omesa, the internal structure, how it looks like, it is composed of like many folds, like about 100 folds or leaves, we, which are arranged against each other like pages of a book. You will see this, this kind um, this compartment on the next next slides, one of our next slides, when we are discussing now the like the how the digestion happens, right? So what it does, it squeezes water from the contents of 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 the four stomach so that it can be passed now through this part, the abomasum. So with the abomasum of a ruminant, this is similar to the simple stomach found in non-ruminants, such as pig. So it has a smooth, slippery internal surface. So basically here, this is just, this is called a true stomach. This is the simplest, this, this acts as the simplest stomach when, it, when we compare it to the non-ruminant. So the upper part now of 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 this the this stomach, um, this this upper part the upper part of the stomach um, contains the glands which produce hydrochloric acids, and then the lower parts contains glands which produce gastric enzymes. Right. Then after that, we have we we connect the stomach connects to the small intestine. So what happens in the small intestine? This is usually moist and it's smooth. So it contains the microscopic finger-like projections called villi. So we cannot see this because they can be, they cannot be seen with the naked eye. So this villi increases the absorb um, the absorptive ability of the intestines. So. Then now I want us to look into the digestion in both non-ruminants as well. So with the digestion in ruminants, there are two, two reactions or two actions. So the digestion in non-ruminants has got a combination of both mechanical action, which is the breaking down of food into smaller pieces, then the chemical action, which is the breaking down of the components of feed into their basic chemical constituents. Right. As mentioned, that there, were, there are two processes or actions involved in the digestion of a non-ruminant. So I want to look at these um, actions through the process of digestion on different organs. How how they how they play, which role they play, um, and how these actions okay. So we're gonna start with where digestion starts, and that is the mouth. This part here. So the mechanical breakdown of food into finer particles is called chewing. So that is the mechanical part. Then the tongue will move the food around the mouth, then back to, um, then send it back to the the throat or the at the back of the mouth, and this is where it can be swallowed. Now coming to the chemical part, what will happen is the saliva is secreted into the mouth in response to the presence of food. Now this saliva softens the food and the, the enzyme known as salivary amylase then began um, the chemical breakdown of starch into sugar called maltose. Right. Then we move to, to the stomach. So what happens here? this area here so the food will pass from the esophagus to 
the stomach, right? So this area here, this is the esophagus to the stomach, right? Then the stomach will contract and moves the ingester around the muscular force so this is the mechanical part then now what about the chemical part so what will happen the, the mechanical action of the stomach mixes the hydrochloric acid and the digestive enzyme in the stomach with the food so that its chemical breakdown can begin so the hydrochloric acid is produce uh, produced reacts with the and some pepsinogen to form pepsin right then this breakdowns the proteins into smaller components called peptides right so the digestive enzyme renin reacts with the protein in milk called carcinogen and it causes it to clot then the enzyme reaction uh, the enzyme reaction forms the protein casein, which is which can be digest, digested. Let's look at the digestion in ruminants. So the full stomach of the ruminant is designed to contain microbes and it provides them with a large storage container as well as a large amount of water. So the, the digestive tract of a cow consists of the mouth, the esophagus, a four compartment stomach which includes the rumen the reticulum which is the second part of the stomach the rumen is the first part and is the largest then the reticulum is the second part and then the omasum as well as abomasum then it includes the small intestine as well as a large intestine i know that we have been talking about this and um, it may start to be boring now but i want us to clearly understand the the role that these organs play in the digestive system of a ruminant all right And now we look into the intake of food and chewing of the cut. This is something that I have mentioned earlier. So the cattle use their long mobile muscular tongues to grasp the food, right? Or feet, which is their food. So this is made possible by the rough surface of the tongue. So what happens now? The sharp lower incisors help to cut the grass and is pulled into the mouth. The food forms a loose mess or a bolus in the mouth, but it is hardly chewed at all before it is moved by the tongue to the back of the throat and it's swallowed. Then what happens from there? 
what happens from there now is it will move down the esophagus by the process of peristalsis and this process is assisted by the large amount of saliva secreted into the mouth. Then the food will enter the fourth stomach where the grass is mixed with water and is coated by the microorganisms and coated in the microorganisms by the contractions of the rumen. Right? Then the honeycomb surface of the reticulum will now trap the coarse long fibers of the grass and will squeeze them into the bolus. Right? Then from there, this bolus will move up to the esophagus and into the mouth into the mouth by the process called the reverse peristalsis. Now then the food is then chewed again. Now the, this is where we say the cows chew the cut or they ruminate for up to eight hours each day. So the cows make about 40,000 chewing movements per day. Now I want us to look at the differences in the digestive tract of a mature and young ruminants, looking at the size of their stomach compartments. So the major difference here is, of course, the size of their stomachs. So as the young ruminant grows older, it begins to graze and the fore stomach also develop, uh, also begins to develop, right? So at birth, the rumen reticulum or mesum of the calf are small and they are underdeveloped. So the abomasum now is the largest stomach. The rumen starts to enlarge in size when the calf begins to ruminate and it's functional when the calf is about three months old. Whereas the rumen is the largest stomach uh, compartment in a mature ruminant. Remember we said with the youngest or the young ruminant, the abomasum is the largest com compartment, but with a mature um ruminant the rumen is the mature is the largest compartment so it is important now for for us or for farmers to provide young ruminants with concentrates and hay so that the rumen can develop as soon as possible so in this diagram here it's different um st stomach compartment from when the calf is sick is is just um in in their first week to three to four months and up to when they are matured so you can see the difference in size with with this one with the first one here the first one in the first week of course the uh, the abomasum is the largest part but all these other ones are quite smaller but from the, from 3 to 4 months now the rumen begins to enlarge it's larger than the others and also when it has reached a mature stage the rumen now also becomes um, the largest stomach compartment So that's it from me. Thank you very much for attending this session for, for today. I really appreciate your presence. So to access the revision questions and memos, please make sure that you leave your email addresses on the comment section below. So what I will do is to just email to you um, the revision questions on this particular topic. However, if you've got more questions or want to engage more, you can also leave um, those on the comment section. Also, you can email me if there are also other things that you want to, if you want me to explain uh, more thoroughly. Otherwise, that's it from me. Thank you very much.